Hello and welcome to the anatomy of the bones. Uh, we're going to learn about some of the bones right now. If you haven't learned these already, I hope you prepare yourself by viewing this uh, video a few times. But I'm going to show you some of the differences in the human anatomy and hopefully it will help you be able to identify the bone just as it's sitting there uh, without the help of the extra skeleton, in other words, without it being attacked. So right now, uh, I'm going to show you something that you may have already seen before. This is a femur. Uh, the femur is the longest bone in the body, and the strongest bone in the body. This is the bone of the upper leg, or people would call the thigh bone. And now it does have this very obvious rounded part here because this is one of the uh, two basic ball and socket joints that you find in the body. So if you were to put this in an anominate bone, although it's backwards, it would look like this, and you would see that ball in socket movement. Now, the thing about the femur bone is it's very obvious when it, you see this rounded end, especially when we compare it to this bone here. This bone is a human humerus, it is not funny, but it is the humerus. This is the bone of the upper arm. And you can see also it is a, there's a ball and socket joint to it. But there's a clear difference between these two. If you look at the femur's ball and socket joint versus the humerus ball and socket uh, joint, you'd see that the humerus simply has a rounded top to it here. The head of it is very rounded. There's not much of a neck to it whereas the femur has this very obvious neck. So we can see the difference from side by side like this. So that way, simply by finding any bone, any human bone, that has a rounded end like this, this long bone that has a rounded end, we know that it's going, it's going to be either a femur or a humerus. So all we have to determine next is if there's a neck. If you see the neck right here, then it is very, very obvious that it is a femur or not. This right here is the humerus. Now, from the humerus, we have this bone here. This is the ulna. This is one of the uh, long bones of the lower arm. This is on the pinky side, so it's on the uh, lateral side of the arm. And you can see something very unique with this. Put these together, you can see that the ulna hinges around the humerus. And that is because it has this very obvious C-shaped cutout right here. This is a very obvious to uh, the ulna. This is something you're not going to see on any other bone. This unique C-shaped cutout. Put my hand up behind it here. You can see it better this way. And of course right here is the alacronon. O-L-E-C-R-N-O-N. -E the alacronon. That is the bone of the elbow. But if you look at that, you're not going to find another long bone that has quite an obvious C-shaped cutout. When you put these two together, that C-shape sort of disappears. You don't see it nearly as well. Sticking with the arm bones, let's look at this one. This is also a lower arm bone. This is found in the forearm. This is the one that follows the thumb. And we say it follows the thumb because literally it pivots over the ulna as you turn your hand over. So I have a hand like this. See it this way. What's going to happen when you turn your thumb this way? It pivots and actually crosses over the ulna. And the reason it does that is because of this very obvious cup shape right here. There is a cup at the proximal end of the radius that allows that to pivot. And then when you look at the radius, there's also a very obvious bump right here near the proximal end. That is an attachment site for the bicep muscle. Also, notice with the radius that it is smaller at the proximal end and larger at the distal end, which is exactly the opposite of what we'd find with the ulna. The ulna is larger at the proximal end and narrows down much smaller at the distal end, which is 
opposite of one another. And that's important because all that has to fit inside the forearm. Let's move on to this bone right here. This is what people call the collarbone. This is the clavicle. Now, something about the clavicle that most people don't realize, it is the only truly S-shaped bone in the body. Now, I know that if you look at the malleus, uh, one of the ossicles and the, the small bones in the ear, it sort of has a question mark shape. But this definitely has a full S-shape to it. And that is how you can tell a clavicle. A clavicle takes about six pounds of pressure to break and is often broken during the birth process, um, not by the doctor, just by the uterus, actually. So, clavicle, the only true S-shaped bone in the body. And yes, these are all real human bones, which is why I'm wearing gloves. Let's look at this bone here. This is the scapula. People call this the shoulder blade. This is the left scapula. You're seeing the anterior portion of it here. Now, a couple of unique things about the scapula. There is the acromion process, this is right here. That's that bony part that you find up on your shoulder. It's a good landmark when we're going to give injections. You go a couple of fingers with it down below that, and it, it makes the, the, uh, the top border of your injection site. This right here looks like a bent finger. You can kind of see it again as I turn it this way. And that is the coracoid process, also an attachment site for uh, the bicep muscle. This is one of the attachment sites of the origin of the bicep muscle. Then this indented area right here, that is the socket to the ball and socket joint. That is called the glenoid fossa. The glenoid fossa is the indented area. So about the scapula, those are the parts that are probably the most important that you need to know about. Let's go a little bit lower. And here we have an anominate bone. That is one, well, one third of the pelvis. The pelvis is made up of two innominate bones and then the sacrum is in between. So this is uh, the left innominate bone. And you can see a very obvious indentation. That is the socket to this ball and socket joint. That's called the acetabulum, spelled A-C-E tabulum. And then this right here, this flat bone, is called the ilium, spelled I-L-I-U-M. Important to remember, the ilium is spelled I-L-I-U-M because there is another uh, part of the body called the ilium. That is the, the part of the small intestines. It's the longest part of the small intestines, called I-L, spelled I-L-E-U-M. Uh, but this is I-L-I-U-M. Make sure you remember the difference. Uh, that will probably show up on an exam somewhere. This is the iliac crest. Here is the pubis, and again, there'd be a mirror image over here, and in between is some cartilage we call the pubic synthesis. That is where uh, the two pubic bones come together. This right here is important to note. This is the ischium. This bone right here is the ischium, and then you can see as I turn it this way, right here is the spine of the ischium, the ischial spine. You can see it right there a little bit better. The ischial spine, this is one of the landmarks. Uh, this is something we look for when delivering a baby. We're gonna use these, we're gonna feel for these, and that'll help us determine if uh, the um, birth canal is straight, uh, or if it's converging like this, coming together like this, or if it's diverging. Uh, straight or diverging is good. Converging on a birth canal is not a good idea. It can indicate some sort of outlet obstruction. And of course, you'd have to um, consider a cesarean delivery at that point. So we have the ilium, the iliac crest, the pubis, the pubic symphysis would be here, the ischium, the spine of the ischium, or the ischial spine is here, that's what we use as landmark, and our acetabulum. This hole right here, not surprisingly, is called a foramen 
because uh, the word foramen, of course, means hole. This is the obturator foramen. Down below the femur, below the patella, we would find this large bone in the lower leg. This is the tibia. And the tibia has a nice T shape right here to remind you that it is the tibia, spelled with a T. And then it comes down at the distal end, has this little notch right here, which becomes important in just a moment, we'll see. Next to the tibia, is the fibula. The fibula does not articulate with the femur. It articulates here at the top of the tibia. And as it comes down, you can kind of see, like, you can hold these together. It is going to create a notch, an area, for the foot to sit right here on that um, tarsal bone we'll see in just a minute. Tibia is the large bone. Fibula is very, very narrow and very, very long. It has sort of a spear point to the end of it. This is the fibula. They do not rhyme. It is tibia, fibula. Tibia, fibula. Not tibula, fibula or tibia, fibia. Tibia, fibula. Which brings us down to the foot. Well, I do have a foot here. It is missing a couple of phalanges, but... Here we can see the foot. Now there are seven tarsal bones in the foot and the two that are most notable right here is the talus, also known as the astragalus. This is what most people call the ankle bone. It's the main bone that the tibia comes down and rests upon. And then this big heel bone right here is called the calcaneus and remember uh, the gastrocnemius muscle has that Achilles tendon that comes down and attaches right here, which is going to plantar flex the foot when that muscle contracts. And then of course we have the metatarsals here and the phalanges and the toe here. The hallux, the big toe, only has two, whereas the other ones, well, at least normally, would have a proximal, middle, or intermediate and distal phalanges there. Okay, let's look at the skull. Now, you'll recall that on the base of the skull there is this big giant hole. This big giant hole is called the foramen magnum, which means the big hole, and that is where the spinal cord meets the brain stem, which meets the brain. You can see the suture lines here pretty clearly. The coronal suture running this way and the sagittal suture you can see here. And the frontal bone is this bone right here. Now it has the calvarium cut around it which is why this skull is uh, coming apart. But that of course the calvary would come off and then we could see the inside. But for right now the frontal bone is here. The parietal bones are separated by that sagittal suture. So this right here is all parietal bone. The temporal bone is right here. And the temporal bone, sorry, the temporal bone actually extends all the way to here. You can see the suture line separating the temporal bone from this bone here we're gonna talk about in a minute. The temporal bone also has this projection right here, you can feel behind your ear, that's the mastoid process. And of course, that is an attachment site for the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And you can see a little indented area here, that's where the three bones of the middle ear are going to sit. Here you can see the occipital bone. Here, and the occipital bone goes all the way underneath and it includes the foramen magnum. So from the side view, the occipital bone doesn't look like much but a sliver, but it does actually go all the way underneath and makes up much of the floor of the cranium. The sphenoid bone, let's see, the sphenoid bone is right here, and the sphenoid bone is, of course, the one that goes all the way across and makes up part of the front of the cranium, part of the eye sockets as well. 
Uh, the cheekbone is the zygomatic bone. That's this bone right here. We're not going to worry about some of the smaller bones like the nasal bones or um, the vomer in here. We're not going to worry about those too much right now. This, of course, in front is the maxilla right here, holds the upper teeth. And then we come down to the only movable bone in the cranium, the mandible. The only movable bone in the skull, actually, the mandible. So there we have a brief overview of some of the bones that you need to know about and how to tell the difference between them. I hope that helps. So remember to like and subscribe and watch this video over and over again. Make sure you can recognize these bones, get one of those skeletons uh, and go over, make sure you can find where all those bones are located. Find those little differences that we just talked about and uh, make sure you study for these exams. Remember, uh, it's important to put that effort in. You gotta put the work in. Or as mom always said, pray for wind, but row toward the shore. All right, until next time, good luck studying and have fun with anatomy. Take care.